I now call Deputy Sean Kenny. Thank you, uh, Las Cancorla. Um, the Social Welfare and Pensions Bill 2014 will give effect to a number of important social welfare and pension reforms. The bill amends the Social Welfare Consolidation Act of 2005. This is being done to provide for the transposition of certain aspects of EU Directive 41 of 2010, dealing with the principle of equal treatment between men and women engaged in an activity in a self-employed capacity and ensuring that the spouse or civil partner of a self-employed worker can benefit from social protection in accordance with national law. This is a very important reform and essentially means that a group of people who had previously been excluded from contributory state pensions will now be able to qualify over time for pension cover in their own right. This will ensure equality of access to social insurance cover for the self-employed and assisting spouses and civil partners as required under EU law. In the case of women, they will also be able to qualify over time for maternity benefit. I welcome this legislative development. I am very pleased it is now going ahead, and Minister Burton deserves a lot of credit for ensuring that it is being legislated for now. Amendments to the existing legislation are also being made in order to strengthen the residence requirements relating to entitlement to social welfare assistance payments and child benefit, to strengthen control of social welfare expenditure by extending the powers to recover social welfare overpayments and to make a number of other changes to the social welfare code. In terms of the EU directive, the bill, as I said, will extend social insurance cover to spouses and civil partners of a self-employed contributor in cases where that spouse or civil partner is participating in that person's business and earning more than 5,000 euros a year. This means that the spouse or civil partner will, under the social welfare system, insurance system, be able to establish entitlement to maternity benefit, widows, widowers, or surviving civil partners' contributory pension and state pension contributory in their own right. In terms of amending and strengthening the residence requirements relating to uh, entitlement to means assessed social welfare payments and to child benefit under the amended legislation, a person must be habitually resident in the state at the date of application for the relevant social welfare payment. Also, a person must be habitually resident in the state, not just, not just at the date of application, but also throughout the period that the payment is being claimed in order to remain entitled to it. This means that the person is res residing in Ireland and has a pro proven close link to the state. This has been done to prevent any possibility that individuals no longer resident in Ireland can, can continue to claim social welfare payments after they have left the country. In my view, the vast majority of people are honest no matter where they come from, and this sort of welfare fraud is something that has not happened on a widespread basis, but I believe it is best to ensure that it can't happen. The social welfare budget needs to be protected as best as possible in order to serve those who need it most, and I think that is reasonable. Separately, the bill will ensure that in general, once a family qualifies for family income supplement, payment of the supplement will continue for 52 weeks regardless of a change in circumstances, such as an increase in weekly earnings. Family income supplement is crucially important to working families, and it's, this measure is about, is about ensuring that families in receipt of, of the supplement have security and peace of mind about the length of their payment. It is a weekly tax-free top-up payment for workers on low pay with children. At present, more than 44,000 working families with more than 98,000 children benefit from this scheme. The department spend on FIS will increase to more than 280 million this year, an increase of 25% since 2012. The bill also extends the powers of the Department of Social Protection to recover social welfare payments. The vast majority of people in receipt of payments receive only the benefit to which they are entitled to, but there are cases of overpayment which arise through error and, and in a small number of cases through fraud, through fraud. And it is important that these monies are recovered so that the social welfare budget is managed appropriately and the money is spent for those who need it. Thank you.